Hi, welcome to Follow Me, the online teaching ministry of Wayne Fleet BIC Church in Wayne Fleet, Ontario. We are so glad to have you with us for this very special episode about Easter. We've just celebrated it a few days ago and we're going to talk about Easter. We're going to talk about the importance of celebrating an empty tomb. And I hope maybe it'll provoke some questions. I hope it might even answer some questions. And we're glad to have you today as a part of Follow Me. Well, follow me, the online teaching ministry. We're so glad that you're here today. And so let's just jump right in. You know, to fully grasp, uh, to really perceive how important Easter is, that is celebrating an empty tomb. Uh, we're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We really have to begin our story before the resurrection. We must begin before uh, his disciples, uh, Peter, denied Jesus three times the night that he was taken by um, the religious leaders and the guards. And, and we've got to go back before that. We must begin before Judas Iscariot sold out and betrayed Jesus with a kiss in that garden, history's greatest betrayal. We must go back to when Jesus prepares the disciples that he's that he's gonna die. Uh, they knew Jesus could be killed. They, they warned Jesus not to go near Jerusalem be, because he was wanted by the uh, Jewish religious leaders and they were wanting to kill him because he, he had dared to say that if you've seen God, then you've seen me, you see me, you've seen God. Me and my father, we are one. That was blasphemy to them. But it was the truth. Jesus is God. And, uh, and to know Jesus is to know the Father. To know the Father is to know Jesus. And so they were warning him not to go to Jerusalem. And, um, and when they saw that Jesus wasn't going to budge, one of his disciples, Thomas, um, he says over in um, uh, John chapter 5, he, Thomas uh, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Now, th this guy, he was the life of the party, right? He was kind of the Debbie Downer of the group. But what he was saying is, hey, if he's going to die, we're going to go with him and die. You know, so they knew the seriousness of what was going on. And Jesus spoke on three occasions. He said to the disciples that he was going to die and that he would rise from the dead. And, but they didn't quite comprehend this. And uh, you see in Matthew chapter 16, here's what it says in verse 21. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. And on the third day, be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he, Jesus, turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you're not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. They, the disciples, did not understand his mission and his message. All, all the way to the cross, all the way to the cross, they just didn't quite comprehend what was going on. They just didn't get it. They, they thought, well, wait a minute, he's the Messiah. Well, he, he's going to be a king and, and he's going to get rid of the Roman oppressors. And he's going to teach Caesar a lesson. Th that's what they were expecting Jesus to do. But that it was not Jesus' mission. His mission was bigger than that. You know, he was coming with a different weapon. 
He was coming not with a sword, but he was coming with love. And so he would say, love your neighbors, you know, uh, forgive people who wrong you. Uh, these are all things that, uh, that he would say, uh, we are to love our enemies. You know, that was a different weapon than what they thought Jesus would be carrying. And, and so Jesus is betrayed by Judas, who was disillusioned by the politics, if you will, of Jesus. And then seemingly all the dreams and the hopes and the plans, they just kind of unravel for the disciples. And instead, they're replaced with fear and frustration and discouragement. And in the end, unbelief. So we go to Luke chapter 24. Um, this is the, the story about the resurrection. And it says it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and several other women who told the apostles what had happened. That is, that the tomb was empty. And, and so verse 11, but the story sounded like nonsense to the men, so they didn't believe it. Now, let me, let me just kind of lay some context. They went back to the disciples, to these men who had traveled with Jesus, who had heard Jesus teach. And, and so they bring back this idea that, hey, we saw an empty tomb. We had two angels tell us that he's not here, he's risen. And so that's where we see this incredible story where that sounded like nonsense to them and they didn't believe it. Peter, to his credit, he jumps up, he, he runs to the tomb and he looks in and he stoops in and he sees the, the empty linen wrappings that the body had been wrapped in. And so the Bible says he went home again wondering what had happened. Here Jesus had told him on three occasions, but it just didn't sink in. And perhaps this morning uh, or whenever you're watching this, maybe, maybe you, you kind of see hey, I'm in good company. I've got the disciples who, uh, they did life with Jesus for three years and they, they did not believe him. And, and I'm having trouble believing him and, and knowing what to believe. And maybe that's your life. Maybe life has just kind of slapped faith out of you, um, even with people around you celebrating an empty tomb. You, you just kind of, the air is out of your balloon when it comes to belief. Well, friends, something amazing happened on Easter morning. Uh, there, there was this uh, incredible, this idea of new life and new hope, and the power of God was at work on that Easter morning. There was this new resurrection power that was from then on made available to people who, who follow Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul, who was an early church leader and also a writer of most of the New Testament, he says in the book of Romans, which is in the New Testament, in chapter 6, he says in verse 10, The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. In other words, because of the resurrection, this power that God raised his son from the dead is the same power that God seeks to put into our life and being able to not live a Christian life in our own strength. Oh, I wouldn't get very far. But being able to tap into God working in us and teaching us and giving us the strength to be able to do what he would have us to do. Uh, that is the power that God seeks to put into your life and my life in relationship with Christ. You know, for eight days, uh, uh, Thomas, one of the disciples, he absolutely refused to believe. Uh, and then Peter, who was broken by his own failure, he had denied Jesus three different times that night. Uh, he just kind of de dejectedly decided, I'm going fishing. That's what, that's what he had done in his prior life, you know, before uh, being a disciple, he was a fisherman. And so he went back to fishing and six other discouraged disciples went with him. But in the book of John, that's one of the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, in chapter 21, it was literally a new day happens. 
Uh, Jesus did a men's breakfast um, and, and for the third time reveals himself to them physically. And maybe third time was the charm. I don't know. But he reveals himself to them and they, they believe and they know that's who it was. Do you need a new day in your life? Do you need some new hope? Are you looking for new life? Paul addressed this uh, again in another book he wrote, 1 Corinthians. It's called 1 Corinthians because there was a 2 Corinthians. And this was a letter to the Corinthian church. And here's what he says in chapter 15. For I deliver to you as of first importance what I also received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, that's Peter, then to the twelve, and then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, that is, at that time, though some have fallen asleep, that means to, to pass away, then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. And by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. So he's kind of, he, Paul's telling his story. You know, he was a terrorist literally would go into this young uh, new church that has come about through the resurrection of Jesus. And he would go from city to city disrupting those churches, usually in houses. And he would take people and throw them into jail and separate husbands from wives. And, and even uh, uh, believers would be killed. Paul was a terrorist. That's what he was. And, and so he, he meets Jesus, literally person to person, uh, on the Damascus Road. He has this, this vision, he has this meeting where Jesus meets him, and he's a changed man. The resurrection birthed the church of Jesus. And, and by the same power that God the Father raised Jesus from the grave, so this, this power of love, and this power of grace is unleashed in us by God's Spirit living in us. Acts chapter 2 was a beautiful story called Pentecost, where a group of believers waited for the Lord to show them what to do. And he shows up in this miraculous way. And, and this, this amazing moment happens to where they're just... Uh, filled with the Spirit of God, and they, they are given the task of telling others the wonderful story of resurrection. And, and so uh, there were 3,000 people in Acts chapter 2, 3,000 people in one day who just gave their lives to Christ. And the church grew exponentially, particularly in the first 500 years, in amazing ways and led by the Spirit of God, with people who experienced new life, new hope, resurrection power, life change. The change in these people was amazing. It was for a lifetime. Peter, who had denied Jesus three times, Peter led a movement to reach Jews for Jesus. He, he led the early church and was one of the leaders. He wrote two of the New Testament books he died crucified like Jesus was, except he insisted to be put upside down. He didn't feel like he should be crucified the way Jesus was, that he didn't deserve that. Uh, that's too great of an honor. <laughs> so he was crucified upside down um, about 30 years, uh, 35 years after Jesus went back to heaven. Thomas, doubting Thomas, the one who said, I'm just, I won't believe. Well, he did believe. And he became a church planter. He went all over uh, the Far East. Um, tradition says that, uh, that he died in India, was a martyr, was, was killed at the end of several spears, and is buried in India today. 
Mary Magdalene, who was a prostitute, um, became a follower of Jesus. And, uh, when, and when she did, I mean, she was all in. She followed Christ, served him, and uh, became a, a great church leader, became a pastor in what would be modern day Turkey, and that's where she died. Andrew, who was also one of the disciples, he was Peter's brother, he went as far as Russia, modern day Russia, with the gospel. John is the only apostle that we know of who died of old age, but not before he was, he was um, boiled in oil, literally, and didn't die. I'm sure he was scarred. Here's a guy, early church leader, and wrote several books of the New Testament. I, I say that to encourage you, not discourage you. What I'm saying is, these guys who had been demoralized, who had been unbelieving, they were energized by something. Something happened that religion couldn't do. Something happened to them. And it was seeing the living Christ who had resurrected from the grave. And they had a new faith. They had new power in their life. They had a new purpose for living. They had new marching orders. And so I say be encouraged today. He is alive and he's coming again. And so we're planning to look at that in a new series that will be coming up after Easter as we look at this idea about living in the light of resurrection, living in the light of the imminent return of Jesus Christ. What does that look like? What should we be doing? What is expected of us by God? Well, it looks like the life of a follower of Jesus, living life and following Jesus on purpose. And I hope you'll join us. Can we help you with knowing Jesus in a new way or in a new life of God working in you in a beautiful relationship? We would love to talk to you about that. And we would love to help answer questions. And you can reach out to us, pat at waynefleetbic.com. We can start a conversation. You can ask questions. You can even disagree. It's okay. But let's begin a conversation by email. And we'll do our best to help in any way that we can. He is alive. And I'm so glad that he is. He's changed my life. And so I want to live for him on purpose. Well, thanks for joining us. We'll look forward to seeing you again for Follow Me, the online teaching ministry, Wayne Fleet BIC Church. You are loved. Take care. <music>